Hello and welcome to CVR English. This is Jyoti. Let's get into the world news update. The United States will continue to work with other countries to ensure the movement of grain out of Ukraine after Russia halted participation in the year-old UN broker deal that allows its neighbor to export grain through the Black Sea. Get that grain to markets that desperately need it, even if that's through other routes. A lot of work to be done here. This is a deeply regrettable and, as I said, a dangerous decision that we urge Mr. Putin to reverse. And I've seen nothing that proves causation here, that the strike on the bridge led to Putin's decision not to extend. Um, he had already been leaning that way publicly. Um, now, I won't speak for him. If he has his own justification, he can do that. But I've seen nothing that to get that grain to markets that desperately need it, even if that's through other routes. A lot of work to be done here. This is a deeply regrettable and, as I said, a dangerous decision that we urge Mr. Putin to reverse. And I've seen nothing that proves causation here, that the strike on the bridge led to Putin's decision not to extend. Um, he had already been leaning that way publicly. Um, now, I won't speak for him. If he has his own justification, he can do that. But I've seen nothing that to get that grain to markets that desperately need it, even if that's through other routes. A lot of work to be done here. This is a deeply regrettable and, as I said, a dangerous decision that we urge Mr. Putin to reverse. And I've seen nothing that proves causation here, that the strike on the bridge led to Putin's decision not to extend. Um, he had already been leaning that way publicly. Um, now, I won't speak for him. If he has his own justification, he can do that. But I've seen nothing that to get that grain to markets that desperately need it, even if that's through other routes. A lot of work to be done here. This is a deeply regrettable and, as I said, a dangerous decision that we urge Mr. Putin to reverse. And I've seen nothing that proves causation here, that the strike on the bridge led to Putin's decision not to extend. Um, he had already been leaning that way publicly. Um, now, I won't speak for him. If he has his own justification, he can do that. But I've seen nothing that to get that grain to markets. That White House blasts Robert F. Kennedy Jr. for alleging in a video that COVID was targeted to attack Caucasians and black people and that Jewish and Chinese people are most immune. What the pandemic has done to, this, to, uh, to families across this country uh, because of the suffering of COVID. And that is something that we have to acknowledge. And that is something that is important uh, that we speak to. Because if anything, all of us probably have that same, sadly, that same thing in common, that we have lost someone that we loved because of this pandemic. So the claims made on that tape is false. Uh, it is uh, vile. And uh, they, put our, uh, they put our fellow Americans in danger. If you think about uh, the, the racist and anti-Semitic uh, conspiracy theories that come out of, of saying those types of things. It's, a, it's an attack on our fellow citizens, our fellow Americans. And so it is important that we essentially speak out uh, when we hear those claims made more, more broadly. Uh, I wanna quote something that the American Jewish Committee said, which is the assertion that COVID was genetically engineered to spare Jewish and Chinese people is deeply offensive and incredibly dangerous. Every aspect of these comments reflects some of the most abhorrent anti-Semitic conspiracy theories throughout history and contributes to today's dangerous rise of anti-Semitism. And so this is something that, um, you know, this president and this whole administration is going to stand against when you hear uh, that type of false, those false claims uh, against, against, those, uh, against Asian Americans, against uh, Jewish uh, Americans. We're gonna to continue to speak out. And uh, we believe, and this is something that we just heard, it's important to protect the dignity and of, of our fellow Americans. It's important to respect our fellow Americans. And so it is, uh, as, as you can understand, the core principle of our country, what the pandemic has done to, this, to, uh, to families across this country uh, because of the suffering of COVID. And U.S. stocks ended higher to kick off the trading week on Monday, buoyed by gains in financial and technology shares as investors awaited the next round of quarterly results. Scheduled to report earnings this week include Tesla and Netflix. More big banks are also on the docket, including Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, and Goldman Sachs. Brian Bendig, president of MJP Wealth Advisors, said that although the handful of S&P 500 companies that have reported earnings so far have beat profit and margin estimates, revenues have come in a little light. And so I think the concern that we have with earnings over the balance of the year is that um, maybe right now companies 
are at the end of possibly passing on price increases to the consumer and now have to look at other ways to maintain index up and the KBW Regional Bank Index also advancing. It's on the iPhone maker to $220 from $190, citing a bullish outlook on India as an emerging growth driver for the company. Scheduled to report earnings this week include Tesla and Netflix. More big banks are also on the docket, including Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, and Goldman Sachs. Brian Bendig, president of MJP Wealth Advisors, said that although the handful of S&P 500 companies that have reported earnings so far have beat profit and margin estimates, revenues have come in a little light. And so I think the concern that we have with earnings over the balance of the year is that U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken blasted Russia's decision to halt participation in the year-old deal that lets Ukraine export grain through the Black Sea, calling for the pact to be restored as quickly as possible. The bottom line is it's unconscious. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken blasted Russia's decision on Monday to halt participation in the year-old deal that lets Ukraine export grain through the Black Sea, calling for the pact to be restored as quickly as possible. So, the result of Russia's action today, weaponizing food, using it as a tool, as a weapon in its war against Ukraine, uh, will be to make uh, food harder to come by in places that desperately need it. This should be restored as quickly as possible. And I hope that every country is watching this very closely. The move by Moscow came just hours after it said a, quote, terrorist attack struck a strategic bridge linking the Russian mainland to Russian-occupied Crimea. But Russian officials denied that prompted them to quit the grain deal. The Black Sea Grain Agreement was brokered by the UN and Turkey in July last year to alleviate a global food crisis worsened by Russia's February 2022 invasion of Ukraine. Ukraine and Russia are some of the world's biggest exporters of grain and other foodstuffs, and any interruption could drive up food prices across the globe. At a meeting of the UN Security Council, British Foreign Secretary James Cleverly also condemned Russia's termination of the Black Sea Grain Initiative. Let us be clear, Russia's actions are taking food out of the mouths of the poorest people across Africa, the Middle East, and Latin America. We cannot allow this war to go on for another 500 days. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky said he has written to Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan and UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres calling for the continued operation of the Black Sea grain shipment deal without Russia's participation. The bottom line is it's unconscious. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken blasted Russia's decision on Monday to halt participation in the year-old deal that lets Ukraine export grain through the Black Sea, calling for the pact to be restored as quickly as possible. So, the result of Russia's action to... As extreme weather events become more frequent, China and the United States the world's two biggest polluters are seeking to originate climate talks. The planet is reeling under extreme weather. Global temperatures are soaring to historic highs as torrential rain has swamped cities. On Monday, the world's two biggest carbon emitters, the United States and China, sought to reignite talks on climate change. With US climate envoy John Kerry urging both sides to cut methane emissions and coal-fired power. That as forest fires raged in Europe, ahead of a second heat wave, which could see the continent break its highest recorded temperature of 119.8 Fahrenheit, possibly on the Italian island of Sardinia. Across Turkey, firefighters continued to battle with blazes for a second day on Monday. Water was dropped from the air to try to quell flames which had already forced three villages to evacuate. It was a similar story for Spain's La Palma with over 300 river overflowed into the city. It rose to its highest level in 45 years last week. According to the government, thousands of people were evacuated to relief camps to escape the flooding. And Typhoon Talim was gaining strength due to make land at night along China's southern coast, forcing the cancellation of flights and trains. Over in the US, nearly a quarter of the population fell under extreme heat advisories. California's Death Valley officially recorded 133 Fahrenheit on Sunday. That's just one degree away from the hottest recorded temperature on Earth, according to the World Meteorological Organization. 
Scientists say the target of keeping global warming within 1.5 degrees Celsius of pre-industrial levels is moving beyond reach. With evidence of the crisis, the planet is reeling under extreme weather. Global temperatures are soaring to historic highs as torrential rain has swamped cities. On Monday, the world's two biggest carbon emitters, the United States and China, sought to reignite talks on climate change. With U.S. climate envoy John, a critical deal that once allowed Ukraine's grain to be safely exported via the Black Sea has come to an end as Russia unexpectedly withdrew its support. This move arises alarming concerns over the well-being of millions of people worldwide, as the United Nations warned it could strike a devastating blow to those in. Secretary of State Antony Blinken engaged in discussions with chief company CEOs including Intel, Qualcomm and Nvidia seeking to understand the industry perspective on supply chain issues. These talks follow Secretary Blinken's recent visit to China aiming to navigate the complexities of doing business with the world's largest market for commodity semiconductors. And the possibility of further restrictions on chip exports. Secretary of State Antony Blinken engaged in discussions with chip company CEOs including Intel, Qualcomm and Nvidia seeking to understand the industry's perspective on supply chain issues. These talks follow Secretary Blinken's recent visit to China aiming to navigate the complexities of doing business with the world's largest market for commodity semiconductors. The Semiconductor Industry Association has called on the Biden administration to avoid additional restrictions and to ensure continued access to the Chinese market. With China accounting for a significant portion of the global semiconductor purchases, last year protecting its profits in this lucrative market, that's paramount for the chip industry. And the possibility of further restrictions on chip exports. Secretary of State Antony Blinken engaged in discussions with A critical deal that won't sell our Ukraine's grain to be safely exported via the Black Sea has come to an end as Russia unexpectedly withdrew its support. This move raises alarming concerns over the well-being of millions of people worldwide as the United Nations warn it could strike a devastating blow to those in need. With the decision to terminate the Black Sea Initiative, the Russian Federation also terminated its commitment to, and I quote, facilitate the unimpeded export of food, sunflower oil and fertilizers from Ukrainian-controlled Black Sea ports, end of quote, as expressed in paragraph one of the Memorandum of Understanding between the Russian Federation and the United Nations. The UN Security Council members on Monday also condemned Russia's decision and expressed concern that price rises will put food out of reach, particularly in the poorer nations. Ukraine's foreign minister, Dmitry Kuleba, said that the halt puts many in Africa and Asia at a risk of facing hunger. Russia put mostly nations in Asia and Africa at risk of facing uh, increasing food prices and hunger. This must stop. And uh, now, you know, we we have we all have a headache. We have to solve another yet another problem created by Russia. Uh, and I emphasized to the Secretary General 
Uh, and uh, I'm also making this em emphasis in all other conversations that if we have the political will, we will find the way out. While the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky, said that Ukraine is prepared to continue grain exports even after Russia's exit from the deal. I have sent official letters to President Erdogan and UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez with a proposal to extend the work of the Black Sea Grain Initiative or its equivalent in a trilateral format, as it is the most reliable. Ukraine, the UN and Turkey together can ensure the operation of a food corridor and vessel inspections. Meanwhile, EU Chief Ursula von der Leyen branded the move as cynical. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that Russia is weaponizing food with Green Deal exit. White House said that it will continue to work with other countries to enable both the Russian and Ukrainian grain to reach the rest of the world. Indeed, we are already seeing a spike in global wheat, corn, and soybean prices just today as a result of Russia's suspension. We urge the government of Russia to immediately reverse its decision. Meanwhile, the United States has and we will continue to work with uh, other countries to enable both Russian and Ukrainian grain to reach the rest of the world. And the Black Sea grain deal was brokered by UN and Turkey last year and allowed the Ukrainian grain to be safely exported through the Black Sea. The deal had been extended several times. United States President Joe Biden has finally invited Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu to the United States of America. Biden had held off extending the invitation out of concern about a judicial overhaul undertaken by Netanyahu and his right-wing government in the country. ...during a phone call between the two leaders, and that is day ahead of Israeli President Isaac Herzog's visit to Washington. The U.S. House of Representatives and Senate have invited Herzog to address a joint meeting of Congress this week. Herzog's invitation has shed spotlight on the shunning of Netanyahu by the White House. Some members of the Congressional Progressive Caucus have signaled that they might not attend Herzog's address. However, it's not clear whether Netanyahu's invitation would include a visit to the White House or not. That too amid escalating tensions in the West Bank. The Israeli government's decision to authorize settlements in the territory had drawn criticism from the U.S. This had given rise to Biden's and Netanyahu's right-wing government that have persisted for months. On the other hand, Netanyahu's decision for a judicial revamp in the country had rubbed the Biden administration in the wrong way. According to the reports, the Israeli government had conveyed to the U.S., that Netanyahu would try to form a broad public consensus for the planned overhaul. The opposition parties in Israel have expressed that this would strip the highest court of much of its power. The legislation has prompted anti-government demonstrations. Civil defense workers searched the rubble of the FA residential building that collapsed in Cairo's Hadayat al-Kabba district, killing eight people, including seven members of one family. Images of Tokyo streets as Japanese authorities issue heat stroke alerts in 32 of Japan's 47 prefectures, mainly in central and southwestern regions. Israel blocked the highway leading to Netanyahu during a protest in the run up to a crucial vote in parliament later this month on the government's judicial overhaul. The proposals have divided the nation and triggered one of the biggest protest movements in Israel's history since being unveiled in January by the hard-right government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu.
now red democratic senator joe manchin left open the door to being a candidate in the 2024 us presidential election but said he had not yet decided whether to launch a third party bid under the no label banner i'm not here running for president tonight i'm not i'm here trying to basically save the nation U.S. climate envoy John Kerry met China's top diplomat Wang Yi in Beijing as part of his visit to the Chinese capital to rebuild mutual trust and restart momentum in joint efforts to combat climate change. The world really is looking to us for that leadership, particularly on the climate issue. Climate, as you know, is a global issue, not a bilateral issue. It's a threat to all of humankind. Australia, state of Victoria, will not host the 2026 Commonwealth Games due to projected cost overruns, placing the future of the quadrennial multi-sport gathering in doubt. Uh, it's not $2.6 billion. It is, in fact, at least $6 billion uh, and could be as high as $7 billion. And I cannot stand here and say to you that I have any confidence that that even $7 billion number would appropriately and adequately fund these games. In terms of uh, where we go to from here, the uh, games will not proceed uh, in Victoria in 2026. Uh, we have informed Commonwealth Games authorities of our decision um, to seek to terminate the contract uh, and to not conduct, not, not, uh, it's not 2.6. The city of Phoenix, Arizona hit 114 degrees Fahrenheit, equaling a historic record of 18 straight days over 110 Fahrenheit as the Salvation Army sends out the mobile unit to deliver relief to unhoused people. For Christina Hill, an unhoused person living under unrelenting heat in Phoenix, Arizona, an eight package of cold water, hat and sunscreen from the Salvation Army can be the difference between life and death. Survival. So if I didn't have the event I don't know what I would do. So, yeah, it's hard. Alright, All right, we got you. She benefited from the outreach on Monday. The charity sent a mobile team to the park she was in, where there's barely any cover. I cry all the time. I, I like yell at, yell at the people. <laughs> so I you know, go away, or, you know. The city of Phoenix hit 114 degrees Fahrenheit on Monday, now hitting a historic record of 18 straight days of 110 or more. It's extreme even by Phoenix standards. For the Salvation Army, this is a disaster response. Scott Johnson is a spokesperson for the organization in the U.S. Southwest. His hope is for the human cost from this year's heat wave to be less than last year's. In 2022, Maricopa County saw 425 heat-related deaths, which was a record. The Salvation Army during this latest heat wave has been serving four or 500 people per day. 
So we're hoping with those efforts and the, uh, the efforts of other organizations that are also providing heat relief that we'll be able to keep those numbers down this year. The weather forecast says record temperatures in Phoenix will likely last for another week. Scientists have long warned of worsening heat waves from climate change caused by CO2 emissions from burning fossil fuels. Meteorologists say it's not a typical heat wave. It's more like a dome in the air mass blanketing a swath of the US, deflecting any rain and storm systems that could provide relief to 100 million people under heat warnings and cautions. And Phoenix in the southwest is getting some of the worst of it. But the extreme weather is not just confined to there. The northeast of the US has been lashed with flood triggering rain, and the Midwest has been choked by wildfire smoke. For Christina Hill, an unhoused person living under unrelenting heat in Phoenix, Arizona, an aid package of cold water, hat, and sunscreen from the Salvation Army can be the difference between life and death. Survival. So if I didn't have them coming, I don't know what I would do. Well, these are the bulletin updates. Thank you for watching CBR News English with me, Chotis.